Jordan, Max, hey, congratulations on the toll. Thank you. Thank you. We're very proud of it. <laughs> hey, so for for both of you, what initially attracted to both of you to uh, to the toll in the first place? I, I think when it first came across our desk, we both just looked at each other and said, this is as topical as anything I've ever read. You know, just the the, the trends globally of, of trusting technology, of using rideshare, of getting delivery, everything. And this was before the pandemic, but we knew the direction everything was going. And, you know, some of the questions involved with, you know, privacy, security, safety, that, that had to do with this new technology. And then it's the horror movie and then it goes supernatural. And this writer director is brilliant. We got to do this. So that was kind of the initial conversation that Jordan and I had, but um, I'll let her take it from here. Yeah, I think that exactly like Max said, it's very topical, very relatable. And also the characters were very dynamic, very interesting, very layered. And it's so fun to be able to play a two hander where it almost just that back and forth is really what the movie is going to rely on. And so there was a challenge and an excitement around that as well. For both of you, this is not the first time you've done horror. Is it, is it easier um, and easier when, when you actually do the same, same type of genres over and over again? Yeah, I mean, I still get scared. So I don't know if <laughs> in that sense. Um, but it's really fun. I mean, we both really love the medium of genre movies. The fact that for us as producers, that you can kind of tackle social issues and entertain the audience at the same time. Um, I don't know, Max, do you find it gets easier? I think we learn about how to make these films and, and hit the notes we need to hit. And, you know, for instance, even understanding special effects makeup, we have a much better understanding of special effects makeup now than we did even when shooting the toll, you know? So it, learning and growing to understand how to make these movies, I agree. But in order to keep things fresh, they still need to be difficult. You know, they, you still need, as soon as it becomes streamlined, you lose some of the magic I feel you got to be organized you got to be streamlined to some extent but part of what makes this movie so special is the grit and it was a, a down and dirty production overnight it was raining we were hungry we lost electricity you know like that's what what really allowed such uh I would just say grit in what this film is well then then let's start off uh first is uh how how did you two develop your chemistry uh during, during the process of this production? Well, we definitely already had chemistry. Max and I have been friends, best friends for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both really respect each other, both as actors and as filmmakers. And I think it was tricky because obviously the dynamic between Spencer and Cammy is they're not best friends on <laughs> camera. So we had to really work at kind of hiding that. But I think the fact that we were so close actually helped the, uh, the 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 relationship between the characters because there was a they bond over the course of the film right yeah. and so I think being able to attain that was was actually very real for both of us yeah and you know it's not actually the first time that we've acted together either we did a film that we produced called almost anything uh, and and that as well we have some moments together on screen that were very difficult. <laughs> Um, but again, because we know each other so well, uh, it brings a very interesting dynamic on screen. So, so then, um, that so-called, uh, production inside a car, that was pretty easy for both of you because you have to spend so much time in there. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was easy. I mean, we got to come out for breaks when they called cut, but yeah, we're, we're used to being in close quarters together. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> we, on our last feature we shared a miniature trailer <laughs> because we gave all the nice trailers to the to the actors yeah. so we shared a little tiny trailer we called the sweat lodge so we're very used to it what about the nighttime shoot, shoots for some people nighttime shoots are pretty challenging they're very difficult it's it's really tough uh it's tough to just switch to today i mean for us we were sleeping three hours a night so it wasn't really a night shoot as much as it was just a 24 
or 21 hour a day shoot kind of thing because we would shoot at nighttime but then as soon as we wrapped you know max and i had to put on our producer hats and it was the work day and we had to make sure that all of our vendors we were up to date with everything on that and um you know getting anything that we were missing for the production so it was it was very taxing the movie definitely took a toll on us <laughs> Yeah. But it, it was worth it in the end and it was a really good exercise in endurance and stamina and you know if you want to make something if you want to make a movie it's not going to be easy and it shouldn't be easy it, it makes it that much more gratifying when you finish it yeah yeah and, and I would just say like no job is too small for for us on this film you know we were acting in it we were also driving to the dump with you know thousands of pounds of garbage you know it was we had to do everything which you know allowed us to have really full characters I feel because we were so tired <laughs> <laughs> we're so drained. <laughs> now I, I know uh Max uh, mentioned before, there were a lot of challenges uh, filming in the middle of nowhere. Tell, tell us how you actually pulled off some of those scenes in, in the forest. I mean, you, you had to bring out, bring uh, other actors in and, you know, um, and set it all up out there in the middle of the forest. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool to see what their production designer, Lucas Gentle, for what he was able to do um, with the limited resources and making it feel surreal in those hallucination type scenes um it was it was hard i mean luckily our kind of base camp wasn't too far from where we were shooting so it was easy enough for people to you know go to the bathroom or you know go to the craft table and stuff um but it's still it's still hard it was rainy it was cold um you know we didn't have big fancy trailers on set or anything so it was it was difficult in that regard, but we were lucky that everybody that we worked with was just so happy to be there. And we have a fantastic crew that we work with here in Toronto, and you know most of the actors were friends of ours, so it was it was really a group effort. Yeah. So it's a forest outside of Toronto, so I should actually avoid that area. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the Toll Man can be anywhere, gig. So you watch yourself. Where are you? <laughs> I'm actually in Fresno, California. Oh, that's actually, I hear really bad for the toll up there. <laughs> <laughs> so when when you guys have basically for the, for the toll man on set, what did he or whoever looked like on, um, was portrayed in person? <laughs> the, the, the actor who played the toll man? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a good friend of mine from Montreal. His name is Dan Harush. Um, and he is a very, very talented writer. Actually, he writes for a show called Letterkenny. Um, and yeah, he's actually the most fun loving and sweetest guy, not too versatile. Yeah. He's not scary at all. <laughs> yeah. In between takes, like, you know, you could have seen the toll man doing some very obscene things, you know? So it's like, he was always having fun with it and trying to really lighten our spirits because it can get very intense making a film and it's nice to have a laugh especially when you look like the toll man it was very funny i i believe that especially since letter kenny is like the complete opposite of the toll man that, that that's for certain <laughs> so 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 we're curious is um when you actually go into you know like a like a a share vehicle what kind of per what kind of passenger are you are you the quiet type or the talkative type well i've i've usually had a couple of drinks with me so i'm usually pretty talkative <laughs> <laughs> um no i'm i think it depends it de honestly for me it depends how i'm feeling if i'm feeling very you know outgoing then i'll be talkative or you know sometimes if i just don't feel like talking to somebody i'll throw on my headphones and listen to music um and yeah i mean i've never had a any kind of bad experience on a ride share um but i know that it can definitely cause a lot of anxiety for people and so that's obviously something that we addressed in the film yeah i i will say i am always chatty um i i will not miss a beat with an uber or a ride share driver uh i just i i love ride share drivers in many ways to be honest with you both before and after i i played this character i just feel like it, it's such a diverse population of who is it that says, you know what, at 5 p.m. when I get off work, I'm going to go make some extra money and drive Uber. 
or you know maybe they're doing this because they're trying to get their grandmother into a better retirement community like you don't know their story and and to me you know that's the ultimate entrepreneur and i want to talk to them why are you doing this so for me i always enjoy talking to rideshare drivers for sure so if either of you were, were in the same situation like your characters to pay a toll would you actually do it because you you two are friends would you pay that toll some days we feel like we could. Right? <laughs> most days, no. <laughs> yeah, most days I would never pay that toll. But uh, there's def definitely days during production that we can get, you know, very angry. And, and again, we have to breathe through it because filming anything is just such a feat. We're, we're managing literally hundreds of people. And it's hard. It just like any industry managing hundreds of people is incredibly difficult. And these workers or, or collaborators, you know, these are not full-time employees that we are always, always, always working with. You need people that you don't know sometimes too in certain specialties. So um, it's, it's difficult, but I would never kill Jordan. <laughs> yeah, never. Well, let, let me wrap it up with one more question. Obviously, we're, we're speaking virtually um, right now, and that's because the world is has gone bonkers and crazy. So I want to know is, for both of you, how are you staying sane and creative during times like this? Who wants to start? Um, yes. So we, during, over the course of the pandemic, we've tried to stay busy. We're working with a lot of writers. We're creating stuff on uh, ourselves. Um, we're in, we just actually delivered a TV show to CBC in Canada. We're in post-production on a feature film right now. So we're staying busy. Um, and yeah, just trying to connect with family and doing FaceTimes and Zooms and mm. trying to have some semblance of normality in this, in this wild time. I think, you know, one thing about this time that we've been through is that we're all in it together. It really doesn't matter where you are in the world. Your society is having an issue with COVID. And so in many ways, I think that's kind of brought us closer together, even though we're further apart. Um, and, and those are themes and stories that I'm excited to tell, that I'm excited to, to now learn from, you know, my buddy in Mumbai who's been stuck in his home for, for six months and, and understanding what it's like to be stuck in his home there versus for me here. Um, and so I, I think, uh, I think it's, it's an exciting time as long as we use it um, with learning and understanding how this has made our lives better, but also... Uh, how not to get sucked into a completely digital world, because that obviously is not what we should be doing as a society. Absolutely. Well, hey, Jordan, hey, Max, thank you very much uh, for, for talking to us about The Toll. It's a, it's a very horrifying uh, film because I, I would not want to meet The Toll Man in the middle of the forest. <laughs> us too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Bye now. Great yeah. day.